Hey, what's up, everybody? My name is Trophy Net the Babbling Belgian, and welcome back to Thronebreaker The Witcher Tales. We're not gonna wait too long, we're gonna head straight into a battle against these dirty Nilf Guardians, because uh, we have some clearing out to do. In captivity, when the scouts returned with information that Nilf Guardian slavers had set up camp nearby, Meave let out a heavy sigh. She knew she must free her subjects, yet she also knew that when threatened, the black clads, whips in hand, would turn those very subjects against her. So it's a standard battle this time. I'm gonna try and go through this rather quickly. Must be an important lesson. So damage, it's a damager one as a champion, so he can damage and the promising recruits just boost themselves, right? Yeah, when there's enough of them. So Arthur's adept. Oh, oh, Lady Margarita told us of this. We can boost up the onagers. And then we can play Meave and Granny Blade, pull back the Grey Rider, ah! and play another Grey Rider and the Arethusa Adept again. So we're gonna prepare in this first round just so we can uh, go all out in the next one. <sighs> there we go. Organizers is always nice. We have reinforcements in hand, so that's gonna be nice as well. Next up, we'll probably go for yeah, yeah. Slingers and Drummers. The source of the best goods. That is annoying, because of course that's half my half my strategy out of the window. Um, let's start with the drummer. Um, he's wasted time for Because of course he's locked, so he can't really do anything. So for now we're pretty safe, and we need three cards. Hundred and one, hundred and actually do anything with the slingers. So let's a just do this. Knock out one of your teeth. Remove all the armor on those guys, and then the drummer, another slinger. The white of an eye from away. Like that. Which is good. And then on the next bit, we'll use the Lirin Hashtuk to give the charges back to the. Okay. To the drummer and the slinger. I think like this. Life at me flout. Now here so let's kill the flout. slave hunter, which gives us back our. Uh, our buddy, our Grey Rider. There we go, and the lock is gone as well. And then we can use the drummer. Ooh, I don't, I haven't played any trinkets yet. Can I cancel? Nope. Hey, hey, don't toss that. He's perfectly that usable. That is sad, but we might be able to replay him in a second. And there we get a pass, which is fine, I guess. So let's pass as well. So with that double resilience he got going, he's actually protected a bit. But, 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 I think we might go for the Skellig away. So, Onager first, in the back, and that's end the third. Slave drivers are coming back, but reinforcements are gonna come in handy as well. So let's do reinforcements on the Rivian Onager. Which gives us about six or seven, I think. Let's put most of them in the back. I think four will be enough, and then the rest up front. Then we use those two charges. And we play that one. With that gone, we're gonna play a war wagon. No, a grey rider and a war wagon. Um, Grey Rider over here, War Wagon over you. here, like that, and then we can use the rest of the charges to take out those promising recruits, like this, and that. Those slave infantry units are gonna come back, so I'm not gonna destroy them just yet, uh, might as well damage them, and then the turn. Arnjolf is most likely going to be next, and there we have more slave drivers, and we get attacked. So Arnjolf over here. And, and turn. We can then use the Devana Runestone to kill off those light infantry units, which is going to be a nice combo. I know we haven't gone for the Skellige units just yet, but uh, we'll do that, we'll do that. So now the slave drivers are going to do that, of course. So let's do this. Destroy the light infantry units. And kill more, yeah, more of those apparently. Um, Arnulf too, and then kill the slave driver. And then the turn, because uh, I mean, those are gonna come back anyway. So, 
Reynards. We must trust each other. And the blacksmith also down. Necessity. Because I'm gonna replay the Devana <laughs> runestone on the light infantry units. And yeah, I know I killed them off like that, but that's fine. That's fine. I could technically do something else as well. But let's just use marching orders and see where the rest of this goes. Uh, might as well kill it off now. There we go. And there they're back with a flash of light for some reason. Don't know why that sometimes happens, but... I'll go two blades in a minute, which is going to end this in style. Uh, we can use the Disgrace Brawler to damage those two. By three, use the Forager to get the Light Infantry and the Brawler. And then use Dark Root 2 Blades to just uh, move all that around again. Uh, brawler. And that. I don't know why the cards are all lit up like that now, but uh, Blacksmith back. Let's get the Blacksmith back and play him again. Then we can also play... What else do we have? Barnabas? Barnabas. Something from nothing. And exactly then use marching mean. orders again. And, and Barnabas. Not supposed to be any smoke. What's the highest unit? Definitely ours. So transform a damage unit into a bear. We have a damage unit. But we have Barnabas. We can turn him into a bear. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll turn him into a bear. Uh, so, like... Oh! Oh no, we boosted him. Okay, never mind. <laughs> we, tu <laughs> we turned the Grey Rider into a bear. And uh, now we could technically use Meave again. Get that Brawlery Brawler back. And get another Forager and a Pitfall Trap. Forager over here. Use it. And Pitfall Watch Trap over it. here. Use the Forager on the banner. And the Forager over here. Why not? They? And there, go there goes the bright light. Um, one, a two. A one. A two. A three. I think, yeah, I think we won this. So they're going to appear on that row. Yep, everyone that appears on that row is dead again. The flashes of light is really weird. I don't know why that comes from, but look at the damage we could technically do. Oh, fuck off. And there goes another one. But I mean, we're gonna win this easily. Ah, this one's got spirit. Yep, there we go. Done and done. There we go, cleared out another camp rather quickly, actually. Which is always nice. Just preparing those zoologies in the first round is always a good option, apparently. So let's check out the notice board. And then we have recruits over there, another normal battle to the north in another camp. And there's actually a road leading out, which is weird. Then a puzzle battle and some more loot. So let's head towards that conscription post and the puzzle battle after that. So there's more loot over here, I'm wondering. So this is probably that road that would lead out. Yeah, because it's broken off. There's a pit in between, but look at that. We're all back up. I feel like there's not really an effect to having your soldiers crumble. Although there might be more subtle effects. My queen, we found a sizable store of gold under the floorboards of the dwelling. It appears someone has hidden their life savings. What shall we do with it? Leave it for the owner, should he ever return, or load it onto our wagons? Well, we need that card shard, so there we go. Second part of Dragon's Dream. Almost there. And then the fast travel point gives us pretty much the same information. Let's see what this puzzle battle is all about. Apparently about cows. That's that's coming back full circle. Because we started out with a puzzle battle against cows as well. Here we go. The Cattle Conspiracy. The Lyrian force came across an abandoned farmhouse. Shattered windows, traces of blood in the dirt, unattended cows trampling grain. Meave suspected either Nilfgaardians or bandits. Reveling in the realm's chaotic state were to blame for villagers' disappearance. The true culprits, however, were rather unexpected. Destroy all enemy units, deranged cows will devour anything and swap any two units. Okay. <laughs> Destroy all enemy units. So that's just those two cows, I suppose. Can I check, check that out? Um, 
The ranged cow every turn on turn start consume the unit in front of this one and move one position to the right. Okay, the Leon Huts don't have an ability, the Sidemen neither. And the Rotting Corpses every turn on turn start gain one counter if this unit is consumed. Damage the consuming unit by the value of the counter. Uh, and he's consuming, so he gains the power of those units. If this unit is consumed, damage the consuming unit by the value of the counter. Choose a unit and swap its position with another unit. And these things gain a counter every time. And this one moves to the left. So if we could swap those around. What does the poison do? Choose a rotting corpse and increase its counter by one. We can do that at the end. I think we need to move first. So let's swap this sideman with the rotting corpse next to it. So that boosts the damage up to 3. So now the counters go up. Let's swap this Sightman with that one. And end the turn. So he consumes that one. Then move this one to the right. And end the turn. Now we can choose a rotting corpse and increase the counter by 1. Doesn't really matter which one pro I mean, although this one is actually higher, so let's increase that one. And then the turn. And now they keep standing there. Um, don't you need to move to the other side now? Hmm. Okay, I'm gonna have to retry this. Let's try it the other way around. So we wanna keep our sidemen safe. So let's move them to the inside and then the turn. Then move... Um, I think we can actually increase the poison now. Probably from this one. I know it's supposed to go higher, but I don't feel like it... Ah, it's not reflecting it. That is interesting. Now... Choose Retreat to swap this Sightman with this Rotting Corpse. That kills the first cow. And that leaves space for... Oh! So now that cow can actually move up. I can't really do anything now, can I? Because if I do this, it just, just consumes that one and it takes one damage. Okay. So let's see. The first ones will automatically get damage. So this cow is automatically more in trouble than the rest. So now this one is gonna die. So if you move the Sightman over to the left, he actually survives. And he dies. So now you would think that the other cow will move up, right? Ah, it's not moving up anymore. Damn, how do you do that then? How do you do that then? Maybe pass the... Maybe I should let the Sightman pass every time. Let's try that. Yes, like this. So it now consumes... The cycle that moves left, that goes up to 8, and now I have my last poison to put this rotting corpse up to 8, and that should kill the cow. Oh, why doesn't it do it anymore? That was bullshit. Kinda missed the explanation there, so I can swap anything for anything. So I would swap the center one out for a rotting corpse over here. I place it out like that. Then if I swap that corpse for this, I get this situation. And now I need to be careful. So I think I don't need to move anymore. So if I put this to four, that cow dies. And now this one will stay there. We have, yeah, we have him. So that's five. It's going to take 5 damage, and then this one automatically is 5 already, so let's just boost that up, and there goes the kill. Damn, okay, I totally missed that you could swap with any unit, so I had like a handful of attempts without that knowledge. Okay, there we go, the ranged cows down, our biggest foe of the episode, and another Mars Grave we're going to have to fill up. So, uh, 
let's leave. This pit is full of bodies. Locals claim they were murdered by an elf guardian forces killed because they sought to join our army. So uh, let's uh, bury these guys. Even though our morale is at maximum, we're gonna we're gonna do that. So we get to our next village, Broadhead. Broadhead now loomed before Meave and her force. Once famous for its glowing forges and clanking manufactories, the city now stood silent. Why, you might ask? Because Mahakam. Decades passed, it had opened its gates to human merchants and dwarven arms, exquisitely crafted and not nearly as dear as those made by man. The caravans had simply stopped coming to Broadhead. When its black-clad garrison spotted the Lyrians approaching, they'd hastily fled, left the city's gates open wide. Yet, they did not leave empty-handed. Their convoy comprising at least a dozen wagons loaded ostensibly to the hilt. With what might they have fled? With something damn heavy, replied Gascon, squinting his eyes. Look at this. Two horses to pull each wagon, and the wheels cut deep into the road. Pursue the fleeing Nilfgaardians or take the city without a fight. Let's pursue the fleeing Nilfgaardians. What they've taken from my city, began the queen. They've taken from me, and I will have it back. Follow me! Meave spurred her horse and galloped off in pursuit of the fleeing caravan. When the Blackclads realized they had no hope of escape, they planted pikes and feet, bracing for the assault. Here we go, collateral costs. We have a shortened battle. The pursuit of Nilfgaardians. Me felt a pounding blow. A Nilfgaardian arrow had struck her breastplate. Fortunately, the plate proved sturdy, shattering the missile on impact and leaving the queen unharmed. Yet if the archer's aim had been true, if the arrow had struck a few inches higher, Meave broke into a cold sweat. It's true the war neared its end, but only constant vigilance could ensure her own would not be premature. Stop! Whatever you carry belongs to me! They gain Kronk! Dull Seifel! Okay, so we can start with the war wagon combo, which is exactly what we're gonna do, so war wagon. And a double war wagon on top of that, just to clear everything out, because there's a, quite a bit on the field already. So one over here, and one over here. Any battles? Yeah, like Arbalest can do its fire. worst, because, well, there's a little of the field right now, and uh, he's going to get that in the face if he doesn't, if he isn't careful. Order! There we go, seven and one. Doesn't really matter that that war wagon is gone. Let's put an onager down and kill that one arbalest. And the turn. And we can actually use the sapper to do a lot of damage because those uh, the spikemen, those spikemen are actually vulnerable for a sapper. So if you do this, we can kill all the the the, the pikemen. And then I can kill about four, four light infantry units. Maybe even just, yeah, four is enough. And then take out the armor on the Arbalest. And there's the final one. There we go. Cleared out the boards. Life is mine now. Oh, you're just gonna die, buddy. Um, let's use blood. Get a rider and a hush duke. Yeah, hush duke. So rider up top. Without hesitation. And hush duke over here. Life at me plows. Now here I'm marching proud. And damage those guys up to almost down. Which is sad because that means he's gonna kill my onager. He's gonna kill my onager. Because now he has two charges. And that, of course. Okay, 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 okay. Let's use the blacksmith the to replay blood. Uh, let's play an onager and Barnabas Beckenbauer, although. Yeah, the Vina Runestone as well. So, onager down here. And the Devana runestone on those light infantry units. 
killing most of the enemies like that, ending the turn. Wise choice. This is not going to take long, is it? Drum it on the field. Right. Left. And then right. use Meave and Granny Blade to. Yeah, let's pull down that war wagon and play another sapper and the war wagon in that order because of the gray rider it's in gonna the be way, a right good levy, big and beautiful let's clear out all those light infantry oh okay that was yeah i hate that that uh, marker doesn't go to the correct place every single time but you won't. there we go kind of damaged my own stuff there but uh, no biggie my boots got sand up here Let's use the Forager in the next turn and use Gascon first. Coin never stinks no matter how rank the pouch. There we go. Killing that guy and then the drummer over May here. here. It away. And the turn. Oh yeah, be a lad. Be a lad. There we go. Let's clear that up. That's six, which is just not enough for me to continue this. So let's end the turn. Oh, those guys are really annoying. So reduce me school down. Use your ability. Pull back the war wagon. Another grey rider and the blacksmith. So the Grey Rider over here. As you command. So we get one more movement charge. And we can reduce me school down again if you want to. There we go. That is that, I think, unless I really want to go for it again. Could pull back the one of the well the sapper. Can we replay it then? I think we should be able to, right? Yeah, we can. Uh, so let's do sapper. And Wagenberg. So Sapper over here. Stop your yapping and start digging. Killing those guys. Off. And then on the four armor over there. And that gives us just a point advantage. And then I'm gonna kill that one guy. And that's about it, because I can't do anything else without boosting it further than I can actually damage it, so... Fine by that. Fine with that. So, let's just put that over here. Again and again and, and again. just end it. There we go. Enough! I refuse to die for these scraps! Scraps, he said. personally, and none too gently, shackled the Nilfgaardian commander. A young nobleman with a precisely trimmed moustache. Like many noble Imperials, he spoke fluent common. The wagons. What's in them, Captain? Scrap, Your Majesty. The Imperial promptly replied. Noting the Queen's confusion, he elaborated. To be melted down and recast into arrowheads and spear tips. Our engineers originally planned to use the foundries in Broadhead, yet these proved too primitive. We were ordered to remove the scrap, take it elsewhere. <laughs> Any pride from the victory vanished in an instant. And Meave swelled with anger, but also with shame. The shame came from realizing that to the invader, her realm was naught more than a weak, underdeveloped backwater. Meave slammed the chest she'd opened shut. Blast it. Back to Broadhead. Let's ride. Crumbling walls, shattered windows, rotted wood. Broadhead was bleak, a dull shadow of its former self. As the Lyrians entered, the somber townsfolk glared at the arrivals and uttered not a word. Meave resolved to address the crowd. Folk of Broadhead, you're free at last. The Nilfgaardian occupation is done. Aye, and a new one starts now. Are you madman? Don't you recognize our banners? The Lyrian army stands before you. Oh, I recognize banners. Served Neatham as a sergeant 15 long years, and then I came back to my own town. Know what I found? 
Hardship and squalor, your grace. All had gone to shite. On account of damn dwarves. Been flooding Rivia with their metal goods for years now. Us smiths don't so much as light their pipes in their foundries no more. You call yourselves the Lyrian army. Colours and banners confirm it. Well, what about your arms? Weren't forged in us fires, but in Mahakams. By us worst foes. Hell, I even see some at knobheads in your ranks. So what freedom's it you're giving us, your grace? Freedom to beg in common, not in Nilfgaard's mongrel tongue. Beg? What do you want about, man? There's no levy on goods from Mahakam. But without it, as workshops don't stand a chance. And ye, your grace, ye wear their armour, bear their arms, and bring bearded bastards to our doorstep. Um, the dwarves are our allies. The dwarves are faithful allies. They help us because... Because they've got so much to gain. Simple as that. Enough. Silence. Consider yourself lucky you've a merciful queen. I'd have had your head off by now. Move along. Before Meave could leave the market square, Barnabas politely interjected. <coughs> uh, frankly speaking, there's a bit of truth to what the man says. I'm perfectly aware of that. But what do you want? I don't mean to toot my own horn, but perhaps I might be of some help? Do you tell how. I'm all ears. Everything your folk make here, the dwarves of Mahakam make twice as fast and twice as well. You must find a so-called niche, an innovation. And it just so happens innovations are your speciality. At the risk of being immodest, exactly. Besides, it might serve the cause of peace to show the folk here, non-humans, are not all bad, that they can help. Not just steal human jobs and piss in their milk. I'll consider it, Barnabas. I shall think and let you know. The time came to leave Broadhead, so Meave summoned her advisors, eager to hear their counsel. They put forth ideas, many of merit, but the Queen would decide the city's future. Invest in the city's failing workshops, of course. And trust the city's future to Barnabas. I think that's a good idea. I know I, I have the coin to do that, but I feel like Barnabas' ideas is good. Because, like Barnabas says, the, the dwarves do everything twice as fast. So even if I invest in the workshops, nothing is going to change. Um, so let's entrust the city's future to Barnabas. After careful deliberation, the Queen approved Barnabas' proposal. He would manage the city's ailing industry and seek to restore it to health. Barnabas, just please, do your best not to blow it all up. Don't you worry, Your Grace. The only boom in this town's future is that of the economic sort. <laughs> and there we go. There goes Barnabas, and we also get morale up. That at didn't first, show the at Rivian first. townsfolk were skeptical of the Queen's decision. But Barnabas' schemes bore immediate fruit. Soon, the foundries and manufactories were bustling with life. Before long, Meave herself received new goods produced there. And there we go. That's that. That is great. Rivians, if any in your city has spoken of Nilfgaardian victory as if it is inevitable, or has dissuaded you from taking up arms, they may be an Imperial spy. In his scheming to conquer the North, Emir Varemris has sent his venom-spitting vipers to live among us, poised to strike when least we expect it. Remain vigilant and beware the traitors in our midst. So more of our propaganda. Now, I'm no ally of gnomes or any freaks, but this Barnabas bloke is not a bad apple. There we go. Now, I'm no ally there we go. So that seems to have worked out all right. We did lose Barnabas, but I'm glad we uh, found a good place for him. So uh, with that, I'm going to take a little break. So thank you guys enormously for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode. And I'd like to see you all back in the next episode of Thronebreaker The Witcher Tales. Goodbye. <laughs>